Hi, wonderful AP Human Geography students. Dr. Gillespie here. And we're continuing our discussion of economic geography, chapters 8 in Selman and chapter 6 in Cuvee. Today I want to continue our discussion as we explore some of the reasons why firms or industries locate where they do. Of course, in a market-based economy where companies can locate wherever they want to, they always choose places where they can maximize their profit. And this is sort of the equation we want to look at. This equation says that revenue, which is simply the money they receive for the sale of their goods or services, revenue minus expenses or costs gives them their net profit. Revenue minus expenses equal net profit. Now, some firms produce products that require expensive raw materials or inputs, or they may have high transportation costs. Some firms require a highly skilled workforce. Others may require lots of inexpensive skilled labor, unskilled labor. Some economic activities require <clears throat> excuse me, a great deal of land to produce a product, while others may only need skilled labor and lots of information technology. Companies always try to minimize or reduce their costs. If a company needs lots of unskilled labor to produce a product, they will locate in a region where there is an abundance of unskilled workers who need jobs. Unions usually mean a higher labor cost, so some companies will try and locate in a right-to-work state, such as North Carolina, where workers are not required to join a union to work in an industry. The lower wage structure will mean increased profits for the company. The, um, there was a time in our country's history where unions performed a very vital function to protect the workers and provide a safer work environment. Uh, I have personally worked in both white collar and blue collar jobs that required my joining a union and I have seen the good and the bad in both types of industry. Sometimes the unions the worker do just that, but other times they become corrupt and they work against the worker's best interests. I have seen and experienced uh, both situations personally. Agglomeration occurs when enough industries locate in a particular area such that they stimulate savings in production unit costs. These industries will cluster together to save themselves money. For example, if several aerospace firms located close together, they could attract the most talented aerospace engineers and also exchange the latest research easily, um, build uh, research centers, mutually beneficial trade centers, suppliers and markets would um, uh, would be located close by as well for their product. So, we distinguish between two types of agglomeration. An agglomeration simply is a fancy way to say clustering of industries. We talk about localization economies and urbanization economies. And what do these mean? Localization economies are those in which there are specialized suppliers of goods and a specialized labor pool. Here is a photo of the garment industry in New York City. Um, the linkages uh, among many industries in the region can be very pronounced. Um, this is a classic example of a localization agglomeration. The concentration of garment and fashion production in New York City allows for very specialized clothing and apparel producers, along with very specialized design labor and production labor. 
So this is sort of uh, the center of the fashion industry uh, for good reason. And there is a, an overwhelming uh, agglomeration of people who uh, have the skills needed for this particular industry. <clears throat> also, think about the uh, overall concentration of broadcast headquarters activity in New York City or in the Los Angeles areas. The concentration of broadcast production facilities, as well as production talent, cameramen, anchor, news anchors, etc. in New York and LA allows for production efficiencies that otherwise are not possible in other places in the country. Um, so that's localization economies. Urbanization economies or agglomerations are made possible by the sheer size of an area rather than by the specific specialization of labor and so accordingly, there are certain economic functions of a higher order that only make sense within the more highly developed urban uh, structures or the larger cities. For example, specialized uh, law and medicine, higher education, universities, banking, uh, banking centers and industries. Um, Hartford, Connecticut is centered in the insurance industry, uh, is centered in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, specialized business and retail services, uh, large hospitals. Um, these are areas, uh, while well, I live near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we have a center of research in, uh, in Pittsburgh. Carnegie Mellon has long been a research uh, engineering Research Center, Robotics Center. We also have major research hospitals, and they're all sort of clustered up in the, um, the, the one area of Pittsburgh, up on the hill, as we say, Shadyside, Oakland, uh, Squirrel Hill, up in that area, as well as the major hospitals are located sort of like dominoes down the main, uh, the main area, the main of the area. These um, uh, specialized uh, areas are located in these major cities like Pittsburgh, for example, and not in the smaller areas. And the agglomeration happens because the main benefit of urbanization is the time it takes to do business, to do the economic transactions like buying and selling providing surgery services, providing um, banking loan services, whatever, is minimized. Always in business, no matter what kind of business, we want to minimize our costs, our outlay, the time and distance that materials and people must travel is minimized. Well, then you might ask, well, why then don't we all just live in one big city, uh, one great big city? Well, there's some reasons why we don't all just live in one great big urban center. Um, the first reason would be because resources are scattered. Um, natural materials, natural resources that we would use to produce something, um, they're all over the country. They're scattered everywhere. Um, and also, for some needs, a simple village is all we need. And this explains the, um, the historical settlement of uh, pattern of settlement, like the state of Pennsylvania or California or Iowa. Um, it's simply uh, the, and the durability of the distribution of communities is explained because we just don't need a huge city to have um, maybe a simple company that sits on a river and has long been able to provide uh, river transportation for their raw materials and their finished goods. So we don't need to have a huge city because we have what we need for that small industry in that small town or city. Um, so that's the second reason. And the third reason is people desire a range of choices. Not everybody wants to live in a big city with its hustle and bustle. 
and it's high energy. Um, so for many people, both choice and economics of their job dictate they would live in the city. For others, they don't need to live in the city. They want the small town atmosphere, or maybe increasingly with COVID, they work from home. So it doesn't matter if they're close to their job, their office, whatever. They can work from home anyway. Um, now, there are diseconomies, of course, or drawbacks to agglomeration or clustering. Uh, as populations and population concentrations increase, some efficiencies are gained in production, but some costs rise, go up as well. Also, pollution, crime, and congestion, those are good examples of diseconomies of agglomeration. Um, when you have a lot of industry or a lot of businesses close together, uh, or in a major urban setting, you're going to have more traffic congestion. You're just going to have more vehicles on the road, leading to more pollution, air pollution. You're going to have more crime, high crime areas, because there are just more people milling around. And there are other diseconomies that are associated with the business cycle. Look at Detroit. Detroit, when I was your age and growing up, was a huge auto industry center. Look at it now. Has the highest crime rates in the country. Jobs have left because the business cycle of auto manufacturing has changed and shifted away from Detroit. Uh, the Pacific Northwest and Boeing is another example of a business a cycle influencing, a, uh, creating a diseconomy for uh, the agglomeration in that industry. Southern California's linkage to both the defense industry and silicon chip production. Yet another example of the diseconomies that can occur due to the business cycle. Um, increased concentrations in a particular form of industry can have devastating consequences for a region. Um, some areas are also prone to boom and bust cycles. I'm thinking of the oil industry, Dallas and Houston in Texas, and Denver, for example. The diseconomies of agglomeration must also be considered in light of equity concerns. If the diseconomies are caused by some groups or institutions, by born or carried by others, then the community will necessarily need to address these concerns. I hope this short lecture has enlightened you a little bit more uh, about economic uh, geography. I love um, economic geography. In fact, my first four years of college uh, were as an econ major. So I have, uh, I, I just think that economics makes sense in your life, in the bigger economic picture of your state, uh, region, national, and international life. So thanks a lot for your attention. Have a great day and a great week.